Do you still have the power to clap your hands? Half past eight, the entire day of meetings. I really doubted whether you will have more power. So, once again. Good evening. It seems that uh, Martina doesn't have to be introduced, but uh, I will turn to you and I will introduce Anya uh, Pamua to you. First of all, we are friends and that's the most important thing. Secondly, we've been working together at Kobieca na Krańcu Świata in different parts of the world. So we met in our professional space. On Monday, the book uh, will be brought out. Uh, what do you want to say to the world? Co chcesz powiedzieć światu? Say, to, saying that Anya helped me is saying nothing. Anya is an excellent journalist and author of books. So welcome, please welcome Anya. I'm here to give the floor to you. You have just mentioned uh, women, programs, books, but your main role is to talk to people all over the world, women principally. Very often these are the women whose voice has not been heard. I would like to ask you to tell us a story about uh, which of them changed you, inspired you, or moved you. It's always uh, difficult to answer such a question because I feel that telling specific stories and specific experiences uh, is like selecting which child I love most. I love uh, all of them uh, equally and save for all these stories uh, that uh, create the jigsaw of my life, I wouldn't be here. There are those which I remember deeper, however. The one which determines Kobieta na Kańcu Świata, women at the end uh, uh, of the world, is like a mission. It's not only a TV show, it's more like a phenomenon. That's the um, protagonist, uh, Carmen Rojas, of the first season. I met her in Bolivia. She has been uh, a wrestler fighting to ensure a better life for her children. She sat in front of me 15 years ago and she started telling the story of uh, her experience with home violence. I understood back then that this TV show is something more, that it is the opportunity to give the voice to those who didn't have it. Carmen spoke on her behalf and on behalf of all women in Bolivia and all women who experienced uh, home violence. For the first time ever, she has felt important and listened to. Offering attention is the most important thing we can do. Giving attention, not giving advice. This meeting gave a lot to me and it changed my approach to the mission. And we still keep in touch. What has changed? Uh, throughout the 15 years. There was Carmen, and now I think about our trip to Mexico. I was really shocked there, because we met Marbella there. That's the topic which uh, opens a box with uh, uh, moving emotions. Uh, the story that we worked at uh, together and where we experienced uh, this is a story of uh, uh, Marbella, who lives in a shelter for homeless 
uh, old prostitutes, and I can I cannot come to terms to such a description. So I'd rather say that. Marbella used to live in a house for sexual uh, worker and now she's in crisis of homelessness. And uh, I dedicated my book to her because her book, uh, her story is moving. She did what she did uh, because she felt she had uh, no choice. She wanted to to ensure good life for her children, to ensure that they study, and that's why she followed this uh, profession. Uh, she keeps on saying that uh, she did it for children and she didn't regret it, but children did not accept her decision. They expelled her from home when they were adult, and she was left alone in the street, and she wanted to tell her story to the world. She couldn't do it, and I decided to help her. You ask me what has changed throughout the 15 years. A lot has changed, but not enough. 15 years ago, when I started uh, the TV show Kobieta na Krańcu Świata, everybody asked me who is going to watch it the topic of uh, women's rights and equal rights was not as trendy as uh, it is now. I'm very happy to see this trend, but back then it was uh, considered a whim or like telling about women that Poles have nothing in common with. What uh, do Poles have in common with the women from Bolivia or New Guinea? It turns out that there are more common features. Every people in the world, uh, all the people share the same dreams. They want to be happy, they want to be loved, they want to love, and they want to ensure better lives for their families than they used to have. They want their uh, dears to not to repeat their mistakes. So I felt a kind of sisterhood with them. And I know from you that this is also your viewpoint. It's like a mirror for yourself. That's the universal aspect that is important for me as well. Since you met, you've met so many women who got the voice, but when, when did you feel you can voice your opinions? When did you evolve as a woman? Uh, you were the, f the first woman who had uh, a show uh, about automotive sector, then participated in Paris Dakar, and you did many things that women had not done before you. Now the foundation in which you work in which you help other women. I wanted to be a boy, and you know the story very well. When I was little, I thought uh, boys have uh, more interesting and better lives, and they could do everything that girls couldn't do. Now I'm 48, I was born in 1974. There are many young people here, so I have to say, these were the times when women couldn't do many things, and in many cases they still can't. Answering your question, I uh, will say that uh, my voice was not full, I was simply barking. I felt I was in the wrong place, in the wrong time, and it was barking. I was loud, I voiced my needs, but that was not the real voice from my uh, interior from my abdomen. It was the anger barking. I wanted to be uh, the uh, motorist driver. I wanted to do everything that girls were not allowed to do. And then I wanted to do things reserved for men. But that was not my real voice. The moment when I learned what my voice sounds it was the moment when I became a mother 
that was a breakthrough. First, I was uh, decomposed into Martina before and after the baby's birth, and then I. It was not uh, that I had been cheating, but back then. But that was the moment when I started to perceive world in a different way. I reached the core of my femininity uh, and sensitivity. I'm not saying that males are not sensitive, but I reached uh, the emotions that I had, had not been aware of or that I had tried to um, hide. So it was 15 years ago. I met you first when your inner voice was strong. You might remember Martina as a journalist, the one who was climbing the highest mountains. I know you as a, a single mother who heats up her, uh, her child's soup and as an independent person. I got the best piece of advice for you when I was in difficulty. You said you have to take care of your life, including your finance. Although it's taboo, you're an economist. Uh, you have economic, economic background. You offered a very important finance management lesson. That's the most important uh, weapon in women's fight. I do agree. So thank you very much for this question. It's not coquetry, but it's essential. It's easier for us to talk about sex than about money, don't you think so, girls? I'm talking to women because uh, Talking about money openly is a challenge. It's difficult for us. On the one hand, we've got lots of opportunities, but on the other hand, we are stuck to stereotypes. And uh, when you, uh, we know that if you talk uh, with your partner before uh, wedding or um, when you get divorced, let's hope you're not going to experience it, it deprives you of uh, some romantic aspects. Owing to money, their own money, women can be free. They can stand firmly no matter what their lives look like. I'm not saying that uh, um, your husband leaves you because they find uh, a, a new, better model, but they can also die. It turns out that the woman who relies on uh, her partner in her goodwill, uh, because that was uh, the division of the roles, if it's a conscious decision, then all right, you have to be aware of the consequences. I remember our conversation about the money. I uh, told you to negotiate at home and at work and to fight for it. It's taking care of your future, taking care of the future of your children. Economic independence for me has always been very important. I don't mean huge money because um, my financial situation wasn't as good as it is now. But at the back of my head, I always knew I wanted to be independent. Right, we are still in the moment where um, um, working at home or housework is not considered work, but uh, your work also includes taking care of your child. Uh, the work is uh, also for taking care of your child, child making sure that uh, she or he feels stable and safe. And sometimes we hear, well, you do not work, but hello, I, am a ha I, I look after my house. I am a housewife. Well, this specific person works at home. She does housework. So 
when we were writing the book, when uh, we were editing some sentences, I wanted to make sure that there are no phrases uh, uh, that would change the reality. So please say that women work at home. They look after the home and bring up children. It's a, it's an unpaid work. It should have been uh, paid for. And this is something that still uh, remains uh, unresolved. Let's get back to your book when you give a voice to women. I want to ask you about Corinne Clyde. I love this story. I'm always excited about the stories I became familiar with and I have described in this book. So you want me to describe how we have met? Well, uh, I was in an office of the New US Foundation three years ago, Una Weza Foundation was established. It means in Swahili, you can. Why Swahili language was the source? Because it's all started with my daughter, Kabula, who lives in Tanzania. She uses Swahili language. So I went to this foundation, to its office, and a, a woman comes in. She is quite slim. She's wearing smart clothes, white shirt, and she starts telling me her story. And she told me that she's 52 years old and she intends to run ultra marathon on the Namib desert, one of the hardest ultra marathon in the world. It covers 250 kilometers through the desert in extreme conditions. And she told me that she intends to run this ultra mar marathon and additional free marathon. So she's going to run 1000 kilometers throughout four most dangerous deserts in the world. And of course, she's got the purpose to do it. She wants to run and uh, raise money for Noesa Foundation and then to give the money to, uh, to the beneficiaries. So I was less listening uh, to her and then she told me that she was going to uh, raise the money so I was asking her what kind of money do you have in mind uh, well how much money 10,000 or more and she told me that she intends to raise 1 million 1 million well I started listening with interest. And this is how I met Corinne. And she also told me that she, she never uh, was running before. And this is probably most interesting aspect of this story. So I was really impressed. She never, she was never running well. Uh, so she said, when I was fifth, I was fifth, she was 50, but she looked as if she had 30. So she said, when I was 50, I, was, I had this, this depression. Uh, my two daughters uh, left the home to study. Oh, she has two adult daughters and she looks like a teenager. So she said, I was a crisis. I, uh, my weight was 20 kilos more. And I decided I'm going to do something with my life. And I decided to run ultra marathons. By education, my, my profession, actually I'm the, pre pres the president of one company, I'm the executive director in the other company. So I discovered this very special story. She was born in Mauritius, she studied in China, she fell in love with a Pole, she moved to Poland, she lives in Poland and she decided she wants to pass all the money uh, for a project for women in Poland, not uh, in Mauritius. She, she said she wanted to raise money for women and it was um, uh, the money for, uh, for Polish uh, disabled sportsmen to take part in the Olympic Games. So she ran attack through Atacama Desert. Now she's getting ready for her run in Gobi Desert. She, she plans to raise 500,000 lotus. And the, the next uh, project is called Mode uh, Głowy, uh, and it's uh, for the psychiatric uh, care. 
So this is the last chapter in the book. What do you want to tell the world? You can buy this book uh, from Monday, but in stores it will be uh, available on the 22nd of November, but you will be able to buy it uh, on Monday. Uh, under the pre-sale. Corinne was running throughout deserts. Well, I was so excited when I was reading her story. And you started diving. Actually, not so long ago, you, uh, you were diving. You were writing to me, I'm in Egypt. I'm going to dive several meters down. Let's be precise. That's the conversation we had. I told you, Anya, I am ready. I decided I'm going to do it. I'm going to dive. Uh, uh, the plan was 100 meters. And you said, OK, OK. And as it happens, uh, Anya's husband uh, is a scuba uh, uh, diver. He's also a cameraman. And I think that you didn't quite understand me. And so you said, you, you told uh, your, your husband uh, that, well, Martina wants to dive, a 100 meter dive. This is what she's planning. And then you called me again. You said, hey, but it's very dangerous. I was diving for three minutes, and I don't think it was even uh, the depth of one meter. So Jacques didn't convince you about my plan. Jacques is French. Anya lives in Paris. So she came here to watch from Paris. Uh, she actually lives in the suburbs of Paris. No, no, from Paris. So I decided, uh, I started to dive many years ago. And I dived a lot. I wanted to dive deeper and deeper. And I had an accident, diving, deep diving accident which resulted in the fact that I spent six days in the decompression chamber. I lost a vision and I stopped a feeling in my right hand side. So there were lots of complications. They were not all caused by me, but this is what happened. So uh, they mm, didn't allow me to dive. Then I was involved in other hobbies. Then I broke my spine. Then I climbed Mount Everest. Uh, I had uh, a baby. I did the project Women, uh, w Woman in the End of the World. And so I decided, I said to myself, Mania, maybe we should start diving. So uh, we went to Egypt. Uh, I started diving with my daughter. I wanted to show underwater world to my daughter. I was a dive master. I was teaching people how to dive and I forgot about this dream. So I started diving with her and I decided I wanted to start diving again. So first trip and the, uh, and the next one I started to get ready for the project but I had this feeling that this deep diving is probably not for me. And when I went uh, to dive uh, in um, September this year, I said I decided that I was so concentrated that I am so good at diving. So um, I dived to the depth of, of 105 meters, and you told me about it later. That's true. And probably this is not the end of diving. I love being underwater. It's important because I started to implement this project 18 years ago. 18 years. So what does it say about me? Well, you cannot stop dreaming. Sometimes you have to remember your dreams. It, it gives you great satisfaction. After 18 years, uh, when you finish something you started 18 years ago, it makes you really happy. Well, we are talking about the underwater world, so you also dived with sharks. And now we proceed with the main character of the uh, one of the characters of the book, Ella Addison. She was five when she started diving with sharks. So you're not going to say, oh, a oh, five-year-old child. Would you allow your child to do this, dive with sharks? Yes, no? Well, her parents didn't allow her, but they were researchers. Uh, 
they were researching sharks, they were dealing with preservation of sharks, so they didn't allow her to dive when she was five. She just jumped uh, into the water where there were lots of sharks, and this is how it all started. So she was five, and this is when she started diving with uh, sharks. She continues to do it, and then she started to fight for sharks. I, it's Sharks are very interesting animals. I am writing uh, about them in my book, What Do You Want to Tell the World? So can you imagine? Let's try to remember the movie by Steven Spielberg, The Jaws. You can remember the, the music theme from the movie. It's a great movie, but it has nothing to do with real sharks. It's science fiction. Uh, it has harmed, the movie has harmed the sharks a lot. Do you know how many people are killed by sharks a year? I cannot hear. Four or five, maybe six, ten. It was probably uh, the worst season. How many sharks are killed by people to take revenge? Thousands, right? 180 million. Not thousand, millions. 180 millions where majority uh, of sharks are killed to make uh, soup of sharks fins. It's very popular in Asia. It is to provide uh, potency, sexual uh, capacity, and some other things that are great for our health. It's not true. So uh, the sharks are killed uh, brutally. The fins are cut away and such animals, such hurt animals uh, are thrown back to water and they die for a long time painfully. So if we realize uh, the absurd uh, activities of human being, we do not uh, respect the planet, animals, living creatures. This is uh, the theme of the Freedom Games, all the panels that are taking place here. We do not have planet B, and we have to realize this right now. We have to start action right now. Ella Addison is only one, one of the young activists who want to protect the planet. So young people who have such need, feel this need, uh, 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 there are many of them. Ella says that we are young and we want to fix what you have uh, broken. She shows that this is also the crisis of uh, child's rights. Uh, we don't consider it that way, but children fear that uh, there will be shortages of water, that uh, the air temperature is rising, and that we face uh, a migration crisis, as a result of which people have to escape, they have to change the place where they live. They, they don't have water for themselves, for their animals. That's the real crisis. The crisis we must not neglect. The children whom we deprive of for, of, for the chance to exist, to live, and to, for the sense of uh, security, this is something terrible we do to our children. That's why we mention Ch uh, children's rights in this context. This is the last moment to change it. And the last question, because then I would like to give the floor to our audience. And I wanted to ask, what do you want to tell to the world today, tonight? I talked about it in the material we prepared together for uh, Vesokia Obtase magazine when we were communicating this campaign. I wrote it in the introduction to the book. I would like to say to the world, enough. Enough of many things. Enough of a passive approach, uh, uh, doing stupid things when there are so many things going on in the world. I'm fed up with uh, f 
fighting for one's ego and it leads to such wars as this one. It's a fighting for ego by a terrible man. I'm fed up with keeping quiet. It's time to speak up and to voice what we want to say. I do believe it nowadays. And now we have to tell the world what matters. Peace, love, hope. These are the things that really matter. These are the these are the words I would like to articulate, but I do believe each of you has your words. You can also use hashtag what do you want to say to the world and say your word uh, uh, out, just like Larissa, who had to escape from Irpin. Uh, uh, as a result of the war, she escaped with seven children. These are not her own biological children. Her biological son had to uh, remain in Ukraine. And now she has two more children that she takes care of. She lost the sense of uh, security. She lost her home and she had to escape to the neighboring country. There are many stories I could share with you, but I'm interested in your stories. Each of you has a story and an important wor word you want to tell the world. All right, so I choose hope. That's what I'm going to stick to. Thank you, Martina. And now I would like to give the floor to our audience. So let's distribute the mics. I'm Małgorzata Jagus, and I would like to ask you, because you achieved a lot, which project are you most proud of and why? I'm most proud of my daughter, Mary. It's not a project. Yeah, she prepares cucumber soups. I never let my child leave home without breakfast. She says uh, I uh, exaggerate with her care. You can call me by my name if you want. You can climb Mount Everest and the highest mountains. You can dive through all the oceans. You can do whatever you want, but there is nothing more important than your family and your relations. All these statuettes, diplomas, uh, uh, handshakes uh, and all the presents, it doesn't make sense. There is nothing more important than health that we learned during the pandemic and our nearest and dearest. I'm proud of uh, my daughters, Mary and Kabula, who just started uh, uh, her studies uh, in law. Uh, she suffers from albinism. She lives in Tanzania. She doesn't have one hand because it was cut off when she was a little girl. She almost can't see and she uh, has a poor sense of hearing. And she recorded uh, uh, believe uh, record. That's, that's a good word. I would like to tell you about the, the uh, Unawaza new project. So that's the icing on the cake. Good evening. I would like to find out how do you find these women? Just like I found you. It happens this way. We've got 8 billion people in the world. Uh, four, uh, half of them are women, 4 billion stories. So a lot of stories to tell. We've got plenty of work to do, Anya, right? We'll have uh, plenty of work. You have to be open and curious of the world. I keep hearing these stories in the press, on the internet. I read the sentence and I try to learn more about it. 
sometimes I tell uh, a story about a person or I'm looking for a person representing a phenomenon. Sometimes you go to a place uh, in a remote part of the world, you are stopped by the police, you are deported and you say, oh, what can I do? I will go to a neighboring country. You go there, you uh, fly, you drive, you reach a village and then you think, you are going to be our protagonist. That's the real story from Thailand, from Padang Ethnic Group. This is the story of uh, a person from Bangladesh who I selected from a school group. And there are more similar stories. I do believe every person has their story. Now it's like a network of people all over the world who write to me and you write to me. I get stories from people, so it's worth uh, learning more about the person. I've got uh, f at least 50 ideas for the next episodes. But perhaps one day I'll, I'll make a program about you. Good evening. I would like to ask the following thing. Since I uh, uh, read uh, uh, Mr. Harari's book about Homo sapiens and humankind, there was a chapter devoted to uh, patriar patriarchy. He claims that we cannot say uh, why it is so strong. There are some opposing ideas why societies focus around uh, masculine uh, masculine ideas you traveled around the world you saw different cultures and societies based on a patriarchal system intuitively can you answer the question why this is still an issue why in the 21st century uh, it should be over I am shocked. I'm appalled. Amazing. Do you know why there is patriarchal system in the world? Because no, there are not enough uh, men just like you, in brief. Respect. A round of applause for this gentleman. I read Harari, but answering your question about what I saw, it still remains because males observe it. Money uh, is uh, one of the control uh, tools. Women are um, prevented from becoming independent. Uh, you one of the methods can be to deprive women of some parts of the of their body of the pleasure and of identity in malawi the girls after the first period are group raped by uh, senior males and this uh, means they can enter real life how does it define their position. Uh, if somebody does something like that to you, you feel you cannot decide about anything. But there are some softer forms. Uh, for instance, uh, in order to um, make women take care of uh, their families and of their homes, males emphasize that they should do it. So sometimes women cannot voice their opinions, but it's happening, uh, but there are no tools to enforce it. If there were more people who think our equality is natural because we as males and females have the same resources to manage a state, a company, we can see it that uh, in the countries where women are in power do better in the pandemic and during times of hardship. These are the examples which speak for, their, for themselves because women are more prone to consultation 
as they are brought up this way. Males are brought up uh, towards aggression and uh, authority, power. It's a curse for you, gentlemen, because sometimes you are not allowed to show that uh, you're soft and women have to follow the compromise and not to... And they are raised not to voice their opinions. I do believe that here, when we can affect it, it's worth changing it. Owing to such male as you, uh, males as you, I hope it's going to be possible. Okay, so I will join the gentleman's question. Now you will say the apology uh, uh, of uh, beauty and intelligence. First and foremost, I would like to say your the I remember Big Brother when my mom used to cover my eyes, so I'm really happy to ask her a question. But now coming back to my question. I come from Legnica. Legnica loves the trash type of macho men and women like my mom, my grandma know they have to be excellent and helpful for males. But how can we make it happen? How can we improve the situation and enjoy the rest of the so the rest of the evening? I am delighted. Which is the center of uh, transition. The revolution has just started here. Do we have more gentlemen thinking this way? I'm going to move to Łódź. I'm answering your question, but I actually uh, tell everybody, how can you help? Your, the change should start with yourself. The mission of our foundation is to give wings, but we also say that changing the life of one person, we change the entire world. If you change the life of one, two, three people, it's a success. You don't need a foundation to do it. It's enough to approach somebody and ask, what can I do for you? How can I help you? How can I support you in pursuing your dreams and your passions? Once you do it and you change the life of at least one person, it will be a lot. This person will share it with one more or two more people, and that's the scale, how the scale effect is created. That's how big changes start. Changing yourself and one person in your environment. So the question is whether I have to leave now because maybe the organizer will tell me in a moment that uh, we have to leave because remuneration is only until specific time. So the organizers have just allowed me to uh, make this meeting longer. So I'm waiting for a question. My name is Antonina. Thank you for the introduction. I am a local government uh, politician from Łódź, and I wanted to ask you about something that is very close to my heart. You are very successful through in the world that is mainly dominated by males. Uh, when you were starting, it, it was even more dominated. Uh, I also live in this world because politics, it is changing, but still uh, uh, males, uh, a predominant. So, do you have any advice, a word of support uh, to young women who uh, live and want to be successful in the world dominated by men? It is very important to me, to us. Are you asking me about the advice? It's very, it's a huge responsibility to give advice. I can tell you what I used to do. I was ten when I decided what I wanted to do uh, with my life. 
and this one decision um, uh, has sentenced me to solitude in uh, pursuing my goal. We have to be clear that such uh, decisions have a cost. Uh, uh, when more women will be able to do what I can do, well, uh, you have to agree that you will live in solitude. And this is the feeling I had. Uh, of course, my parents supported me. I was very lucky. Not everyone is so lucky to have parents who uh, provide us with roots and wings. That was my childhood, and uh, I am where I am thanks to my parents. That's why I am the mother I am. I will tell you about another project of UNASA Foundation. That is to support young people. I Initially, I was feeling as a weirdo. Sometimes I was humiliated, but I still did my job. And uh, I, I knew what I wanted, and I didn't allow people to change my, uh, my mind. Even if I'm not approved of, I will not change my work. I hope you won't have to pay this price. And if yes, it is still worth it. Hi, my name is Ola, and I wanted to ask you about uh, the topic of money you have raised. Uh, you said that this is still a taboo, especially among females. So I wanted to ask you whether there was a breakthrough moment uh, when you realized that uh, money is important and that it's, it is worth talking about financial independence or uh, whether there was a breakthrough moment uh, when you realized that it is worth uh, thinking, considering money. Yes, I have seen too many women who depended on their men and who couldn't decide on their own lives uh, uh, about leaving their partners when they were experiencing uh, verbal uh, violence, economic violence. Very often we do not realize what economic violence is. It happens even when the partner uh, r limits money available to the woman, when he controls expenditure, when he doesn't trust his uh, partner, he's asking whether you really need this money to buy another blouse or to maintain kids. And also, uh, victims of physical uh, violence. I have witnessed such situation. I was a good student. Once I graduated from the secondary school, I didn't start uh, full-time uh, st university education. Uh, I, was, uh, I was going to evening studies, and it was my decision. Uh, I never worked for money as such. I work because I love something, because I'm passionate about something. I only do things in which I'm really engaged and only then you can work well. So there were moments uh, when uh, I really suffered, but I wanted to show that I'm able to do this and that I will get another chance. chance. I never claimed that things uh, must be given to me, so I did what I loved. I earned uh, little money, but I did uh, earn, it, earn it. And I decided that I'm responsible for my life and nobody will tell me what I have to do. So when my friends were graduating from the full-time studies, they had a graduation diploma, they were looking for a job. I had a, a base of experience and the time when I entered the labor market, it was the crazy 1990s. This is when, uh, when people were promoted only because they were in the right place and in the right time. 
it was my case. So I was going to many places. I was very curious if somebody was closing the door. I was putting my uh, foot uh, in between the door. If I was thrown through the doors, I was coming back through the window because when I believe in something, I just keep doing it. Nobody can stop me. Thank you for the for the for the round of applause, but it's not available to everyone. I don't want to give you advice. This is my way and my experience. Everyone is different. You can have a completely different path. I, impossible doesn't exist, uh, but it doesn't work for everyone. My parents uh, really influenced my life. I don't know what would happen if I didn't know that I can always count on them. I don't know whether I would have enough courage and energy. If you're making different choices, don't blame yourselves. We are all sufficiently good. And please remember this from today's meeting. Thank you, Martin. Uh, well, you, to you told us that we regain our voice thanks to the financial independence. It's true. There's also another aspect, something else which uh, gives us more voice, wise voice, um, more uh, good in the world. It, it's, uh, it's for the politics. Uh, to Today, uh, I could meet uh, women at the different ages and we talked what is needed to make sure that more people, uh, more women become politicians. Why women are scared to become politicians and why would it be important? Uh, we, we were talking about different values in politics and the good. Uh, it's very important, very often being good is perceived as being weak. So we really need the power, the strength of women. So firstly, how would you encourage uh, women, great women you know in Poland? We are talking about the community of values, not about political beliefs. How would you convince women to become politicians? We have to do it, otherwise there, otherwise there is no other solution. And I know that your foundation is referred to as Yes, We Can. It's a, it's a phrase well known in the American politics. So I wanted to develop a project to involve more women to become politicians. You have also mentioned climate. You were speaking as the ambassador for climate and I would like you to become the European ambassador of the climate pact. Uh, later on I will uh, I will uh, contact you. I love watch. What is going on here? I have already said it but I will repeat. Most women I know, maybe not just uh, women, also men, should be involved in politics. And they say, I don't want to get into politics. It's like a swamp. And this is how I associate Polish politics. And it's not nice. Sometimes people say, well, I'm not interested in politics, but it's not possible not to be interested in politics because politics impacts our lives. So I would like to warn you, don't just say that you are not interested in politics. Do you know when politics starts? When we are voting. I still cannot understand why in Poland so many people decide not to vote. That is probably why the situation is as it is, because people think that the votes are not important. So we all need to vote. Only then we will be powerful to vote for people who should become politicians. Yes, and we should have female politicians. Uh, parties were used in some countries to achieve this objective. Maybe there is no other way out. So I would like to encourage you to vote, first of all. And uh, uh, when it comes to the pact, uh, contact me later on. Thank you very much. The last question, because I wanted to tell you about something very important. So the last question. Martin, uh, you are a single parent uh, of two daughters. 
when so uh, you are bringing up two children this is a very important uh, mission so which directions do you follow this is a very important question I mainly follow my intuition I had a moment in my life when I was using hard facts I was reading lots of textbooks today I would like to throw them away through the window I like to listen to my intuition I wish I did it when I was young but we were we women are taught not to follow our intuition we should listen to wiser people so first of all I would give myself the right to rely on my uh, internal belief so i follow this direction i want to make sure that my child is happy these are small things very often so for example uh, you need to allow young children small children to decide for themselves this is what i was teaching my children my my daughter when she was two or three i didn't tell her which clothes to wear which food she should eat i shouldn't i i, I tried not to influence her choices and i didn't assess her nobody has ever asked me which grade uh, i received uh, for physics in my first year of secondary school and actually uh, i had d grade so i was telling my uh, daughter that i don't care about the grades uh, i just hope that she will uh, progress uh, with the specific years of study so i trust my child this is also important I prefer to equip her in the knowledge, to tell her about the world as much as I know, and I prefer to, ex to, to, to allow her to experience. We would like to protect our children from our mistakes. I have mentioned it, but it's not possible. So I bring up my daughter to be open, to be brave, and the courage it comes from uh, our mistakes and nobody punishes us for the mistakes nobody humiliates us thank you very much for this question because uh, we have uh, i have just uh, uh, reached that point when i want to tell you about the super important project the young hands openly about mental health this monday uh, we started with this project we cooperate with different foundations, with specialists and experts. We uh, still uh, built this group, but first of all, I need you. Are there any people who are younger than 19 years old? Okay, I need you because we are starting a, a survey and I would like you to take part in this uh, survey. It's performed in elementary and secondary schools among respondents 18 or 19 years old. We have just started the project. It will last until the end of February. This, uh, this exam is free of charge, it's anonymous. And I want, I, we want to ask young people what you need because adults are just trying to guess what our children may need. I need to ask you, I need to give the voice to young people. I am looking at you and then I address all the young people who have raised their hands. Talk to your teachers, headmasters. Uh, to, 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 to propose that your schools take part in this project. Are there any teachers in the audience? Well, please help me. Please support me. I do respect your work. I know that your work is very hard and sometimes you are missing tools to cope in these very difficult times. How many parents are there in the audience? Great. I also need you to express consent uh, for your children to take part in this survey. I need you to take part in this process. There is dramatic situation in terms of mental health of young people, it's dramatic. Do you know that the increase in the number of su suicides and suicidal attempts, uh, it has reached 77%. And among girls, over 100% girls uh, uh, hurt themselves. Children are lost. They don't know what to do. I am the I am the mother of a teenager. We.
teachers feel pressure and no help. So it's time to act. Uh, we can do something about it. That's why we are starting this initiative. Young heads openly about mental health. Time to talk uh, about it. Uh, I'm going to share my uh, personal experience. Nearly two years ago, my daughter received a phone call from her friend who decided to commit suicide, and she confessed it to my daughter and what uh, my daughter was supposed to do after the friend's death. It was a traumatic experience for her, for me, and for the girl, for her parents for uh, the school that I alarmed for us all. It was traumatic and I started uh, to seek help. Do children know where they uh, should go to get support? Have they ever visited a psychologist? No, you go there because it's a punishment. Can you tell what I experienced? No, 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 you've got everything. I gave you everything. I work, you've got the new iPhone, new shoes. What else do you need? When I was at your age, you know, it doesn't make sense. Because when we were young, the circumstances were completely different. My experience of a teenager and my daughter's experience is a different story. Hate. I argued with a colleague, never with Anya, but only the two of us knew that, and that was it. Perhaps someone else at school now, it is disseminated on the internet, and that's the pressure nobody can resist. So I do encourage everybody to look at our children and to listen to them. We should not assume we know something about it. We are not in their heads. Bedoas is with us. Over 11 million uh, hits on TikTok, which promotes this campaign. Do you use TikTok? I'm not going to force you, but once we finish this meeting, follow it, share it. Let's do it together. I do encourage everybody, and I will be much obliged. I thought the foundation should focus on women. What if we didn't glue broken wings? What if we started earlier, and if we let young people spread their wings and be brave to be themselves? That's a beautiful mission, and I invite you to follow me. I suppose we can end and uh, giving voice. I just wanted to say, remember uh, Młode Głowy, uh, Młode Głowy uh, PL, um, Young Heads, our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok is our strategic partner. They support us in this project. And it brings together young uh, people and older people. Thank you for your support. In order to leave you uh, with what Unaweza does, I would like to play a short video and then we'll leave brief. Podróżuję po świecie, spotykam niezwykłe kobiety i wiem, że wszystkie jesteśmy takie same. Chcemy kochać i być kochane, czuć się bezpiecznie, zapewnić swoim dzieciom lepsze życie. Dla wielu los nie był łaskawy, ale jestem pewna, że razem możemy to zmienić. Po to właśnie powstała Fundacja Unaweza. Zapewniamy możliwości edukacji, opieki zdrowotnej i prawnej. Pomagamy w spełnianiu marzeń. Dajemy kobietom skrzydła. Unaweza oznacza you can, możesz. Każda z nas może. Teraz możemy działać razem. Unaweza. Each of us can do it. Thank you very much for this meeting.
I love you. The watch is amazing. Thank you. It's great to see you. It's great to see so much energy. Thank you for being with us and uh, for getting so much from you. Thank you once again. It's not always easy to recognize. It may look like this, or like this. It may be a burden, but it is a responsibility that we embrace nonetheless. But if it means this for one person and this for someone else, maybe it ultimately means being there for one another. It isn't handed to us, but we know where to find it and how it feels, how it tastes, and what it sounds like when we finally have it. It means different things to different people, but for many, it means everything. And if we all fight for it, it will eventually bring us together. Atlas Network is, as the name suggests, a network and it's global. We work all around the world. We're based in the U.S. We have about 159 partners in uh, the United States right now. And the bulk of our partners are outside, nearly 500 in total. Atlas Network, it connects people uh, from all over the world, defending the idea of uh, human dignity, uh, defending human rights and personal liberties. Atlas Network is 
uh, focusing on, I think, the most important and moral cause in the entire world. We partner with local innovators, local leaders who understand conditions on the ground in communities facing real challenges. We look at the people from the worldwide freedom movement that are passionate, are ready to make a difference, understand local conditions, and we invest in them. At Atlas Network, we unleash individual ingenuity to enrich humanity. The United States does not have a lock on the idea of freedom and liberty. Those ideas are beyond borders. One of the main goals of Atlas Network is to eradicate poverty around the world. And we do that by investing millions of dollars in our partners' work every year. Historically, uh, wealthy nations around the world have tried to help low-income countries develop. The way we've been doing it traditionally has not really been working. So there's a movement to do development differently, and that means we need to step back as outsiders and rethink the role that we're playing in helping people in low-income countries achieve their dreams. We want to make the world a better place. We want to make the world a freer world. All of us want to leave a legacy and be part of something big to make a better world. This is exactly the work of Atlas Network. With our growing number of hundreds of successful partners, we're stronger than ever. Changing the world. Changing the world. Changing the world starts together with, with us. us.